Exciting video for you today. We're gonna talk about compression, especially vocal compression. And I'm gonna share with you my top five vocal compression tricks for a pro vocal sound. Hey, what's up my friend, the Crystal Lim here from Mixdown Online. I hope you're good. Now, before we start this one out, I wanna offer you a free gift. And this time around, it's a free PDF guide on the fundamentals of compression, where I explain to you everything you need to know about compression, even the different types of compressors, like a FET compressor, uh, a VCA compressor, opto compressor. So check it out, the link is down below. Okay, now let's jump in Cubase and start talking about vocal compression. Okay, now this is an old project I worked on years ago by an artist called Peggy Polito from France. And uh, let's have a quick listen to what we have. Uh, as you can tell, we have a more quieter uh, verse compared to what we have on the chorus. And we have like dynamic peaks going on. And that's why we essentially work with compressors is to uh, just control the dynamic range of the signal. So this is basically what a compressor is gonna do. It's basically gonna be an automatic volume controller, okay? Uh, but it also plays with the sound envelope, which is gonna affect the character of the vocal and also the tone of the vocal, depending on the compressor you work with. Uh, so those are different aspects of working with compression. Uh, but for the most part, what we need to do here is to add more control on the dynamics of the vocal. Now, the first thing that I do here when I mix a vocal uh, is to use EQ and de before working with a compressor. And what I do as far as the EQ goes, like you can see here, I do some correction EQ basically uh, with some uh, subtractive EQ that we call, which, I, which means that I'm just taming down all the problematic frequencies that I have on this vocal. Uh, and same for the de -esser. I have a de uh, which is gonna control the S's of the vocals, and I don't want those uh, problematic frequencies and S's to affect the compressor. So that's why I'm uh, working that out before before uh, going into the first compressor. So that is the first trick to use EQ correction and de before compressing. Now for the next trick is to understand the attack and release parameter of a compressor. Uh, so let's add some compression on this vocal. I'm gonna use just a stuck plugin compressor uh, from Cubase. The regular one, very simple, transparent, works very well. Uh, it's the perfect tool if you're starting to mix and you're new to compression. So this is the type of compressor you need to work with. All right, so now I'm gonna bring back my threshold up. Um, I have my ratio where I set that up to four to one ratio. And I have the attack time and release time right here, which I'm gonna uh, work with. Now, if we start with the attack time, uh, the attack time is gonna be the amount of time it's gonna take to the signal to get fully compressed once it reaches the threshold point, okay? So once uh, the signal gets below the threshold point, it's gonna be the time it takes uh, for the signal to be fully compressed, okay? So that's why I'm repeating that twice so you can understand it correctly. Uh, for the release time, it's the other way around. Once the signal uh, goes above the threshold point, it's gonna be the time for the compressor to stop compressing, basically. Um, so this is what the release time goes and it affects the character of uh, the vocal. So we're gonna check that out right away. So what I'm gonna do for now is to bring that to a kind of a medium uh, release time and let's bring the attack time uh, slower and let's start compressing. <laughs> Okay, now I'm gonna solo this part and I'm gonna overdo it so we can actually hear what the compression is doing. La vie est reine, n'attendons plus que nous ayons disparu. So okay, now the attack time is pretty slow. I'm gonna bring that down to 0.1 millisecond, very fast. La vie est reine, n'attendons plus. Okay, now the attack of that vocal is getting cut off. This is not what I want to do with this one. 
la vie est reine, n'attendons plus so I'm bring my que nous ayons disparu. Slower. So 10 milliseconds or so is going to be a good start point. La vie est reine, n'attendons plus. Okay, now as far as the release goes. Again, I'm over compressing for now so we can hear a difference. Uh, now the release time. Right now it's at 100 milliseconds. If I bring it slower. La vie est reine, n'attendons plus. Que nous ayons disparu. Okay, now the vocal takes way too much time uh, to uncompress itself, so I'm getting a lot of compression. Okay, so this is not what I want. I want to keep that vocal a bit more uh, up front. Now it sounds a bit further away uh, because of the release time that is a bit too slow. So I'm going to bring that faster. La vie est reine, n'attendons plus. Que nous ayons disparu. Ça Note that with a faster release, the vocal sounds way more upfront. I'm going to do this again, okay, by bringing the release time slower and then bring it back to a faster release time. La vie est reine, n'attendons plus que nous ayons disparu. Sortons des citadelles, tout s'envolera. Okay, now you can tell the vocal is way up front, you know, with a faster release. So this is what the release and attack parameters uh, will do to your signal. Very important to understand. What I'm going to do now is to keep it at around 60 milliseconds. I think this is going to be fast enough for this song. Now let's listen in the context of the music. La vie est reine, Okay, now, the more I add threshold, you know, the more I bring down my threshold, the more I'm going to need to bring up the makeup gain just to compensate for the loss of volume. La vie est reine, n'attendons plus Que nous ayons disparu Sortons des citadelles Okay, so I think that's pretty good. Now, I'm getting a lot of compression the minute I go into the chorus, okay? Um, and I want to control that. And this is my third trick that I have for you, is to work with pre-gain automation uh, before you go into your compressor. Uh, especially with a vocal like this one, where I have a lot of uh, dynamics going on. The uh, chorus is way louder than uh, the verses. So I'm going to fix that up with pre-gain, and I'm going to use clip gain, basically, uh, so to, just to bring down some sections of uh, the, uh, the chorus, actually actually, just to uh, bring that vocal a bit more stable, dynamically speaking, before going into compression. So this way, I'm going to keep my compression more transparent. Okay, so let's try this out. I'm going to go to the chorus. Que nous ayons disparu, de... Okay, starting here, I'm just going to bring that down until I get to the end of the chorus. just by a couple of dBs. And let's listen to how that sounds like. Que nous ayons disparu, des tout en vain. Okay, so I'm gonna take my time to fine tune a few things, bring this part a bit louder, okay. Que nous ayons disparu, Okay, let's just play around the end part right here, just to bring that a bit louder. Okay, I think that's good. So now I have something a bit more stable as far as the dynamics goes. I can actually fine tune even further, but I'm gonna keep it as is for now, and the compressor is gonna do the rest, okay? But when I mix a vocal, it's gonna happen uh, that I'm gonna go back and clip gain some stuff uh, while I'm mixing the vocal, and not only at the beginning before adding compression. Uh, and this, so you know, is gonna affect the signal going into 
the compressor, okay, like into all the insert chain, basically. Okay, it's not like volume automation. Volume automation is also very useful um, when mixing, of course, and I'm gonna explain to you why later on. But volume automation, which is basically writing up the channel's fader, this is gonna come after the, uh, the, the, the inserts you have on your channels, okay? So after your, uh, your signal has been processed, then you're gonna do some volume automation. But pre-gain automation, like I'm doing right now with clip gain, is gonna affect the signal going into the inserts, okay? So just so you know. Now I have a more stable signal going into the compressor, and I can actually tweak that compressor to taste. Uh, and this time around, what I'm gonna do, instead of using the stuck plugin, I'm gonna use an 1176, which is gonna add a bit more character, I would say, tone uh, to uh, to the signal, which I like. And this is a very fast compressor. The attack time is ultra fast. Uh, it's a FET compressor. And this is one of the main character of this compressor is how fast the, uh, the attack time is. Uh, so I'm gonna bring that down to one. Now one is gonna be the slowest attack time in this case. And uh, it's gonna go down on a regular uh, 1176. We're talking about uh, 0.8 milliseconds. So this is very fast, okay? <laughs> but this is the slowest attack time on an 1176, and it's gonna go uh, as fast as, is it like 0.2, milli, 0.2 microseconds or something like that? Anyways, very fast. It's in microseconds, super fast. So I'm gonna just play around that, that attack time and uh, release. I'm gonna keep it fast for now. And now I'm gonna just uh, use, again, a four to one ratio, and we'll see how that goes. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I'm getting a lot of gain reduction compared to the uh, the stuck plugin. That's normal. You know, gain reduction is not going to be the same from one compressor to another. Uh, each compressor is going to react differently. On this one, I can actually get a lot of gain reduction and keeping my uh, my compression sound um, pretty nice and not sounded too over compressed and I kind of like the tone that I'm getting with the 1176 also so this is the type of compression I'm getting with this one now for the uh, fourth tip that I have for you is to use more than one compressor now I've only been using one compressor and this time around I'm gonna use two compressors so this is my next trick is to use more than one compressor use two compressors. Now this time for my first compressor, I'm gonna get back with the 1176, but I'm gonna focus only on the peaks, okay? I'm gonna bring that down and uh, bring my attack time this time to a very fast attack time. Again, what I'm doing here can be done with any compressor of your choice. So uh, let's go with a fast attack on this one and a faster release. The goal here is to just tame, to tame down the peaks that I'm getting. So I'm gonna go with a super high ratio. I'm actually limiting basically. So let's try this out and I'm just gonna aim for a one or two dBs of gain reduction on the peaks only. Now I'm pretty much taming down the peaks, so most of the time I'm not getting any gain reduction. Uh, so this is basically what this is gonna do and that is its purpose for now. Next, as a second compressor, I'm gonna use a, a tube compressor. Uh, which is gonna be a bit more slow as far as the type of compression, a bit like an LA-2A, uh, but this time around, I'm gonna use the Tube STA, uh, same as the, the 1176. Uh, this one is by Arturia, which are great compressors, by the way, so if you wanna check them out, I actually made a video um, reviewing all those uh, compressors by Arturia, which sound great. Okay, I'm gonna leave the link on top and down below if you wanna watch it. Uh, so let's go with this one. Again, going in with the fast attack, uh, which is gonna turn at around 10 milliseconds or so and a fast release. And 
I kind of like the tone of this one. It's going to add a bit more smoothness to the tone of my vocal, which is something that I like a lot. So let's try it out. Okay, now we're gonna listen to a before and after, you know, before compression and after compression. So let's start by listening to the uncompressed vocal. Okay, and now with the compressed signal. Now this is a huge difference. It's we end up with a way more stable vocal that sits well within the music, okay? Uh, now the last tip that I have for you, if needed, use dynamic EQ. Dynamic EQ is basically uh, compression on a specific band of frequencies. Uh, let me show you. So in my train, I have a frequency which is a stuck EQ plugin out of Cubase, but this one has an option called Dynamics uh, that I have right here. So this is gonna activate the compressor on that band of frequencies. And this is a very good tool if you need to tame down one specific band of frequencies that can be aggressive or uh, can just be too much in some part of the song um, and not always. So cutting out those frequencies frequencies that is not necessarily the good move to go towards to, but just taming those frequencies down when they are just overloading the mix, um, using a dynamic EQ is going to serve this purpose uh, well. Okay. So let's say this vocal has a bit too much high mid frequencies at some point during the chorus. Um, in that case, I would actually use a dynamic EQ and bring down those frequencies. Um, and the rest is going to be the same parameters found on uh, every compressor. So we have have the ratio, the attack, release time, and the threshold. So let's try this one out. Okay, so that is an example of uh, something that I would do with a dynamic EQ. Uh, the mid-range also can be uh, a good band of frequencies to tame down with some dynamic EQ, compressing those uh, those bands of frequencies, um, especially if you have more you know low mids going on on the verses compared to the chorus. Uh, this again can be a good tool to work with. You can also use a multi-band compressor if you wish to, uh, which is going to be a different approach than a dynamic EQ, but is going to serve the same type of purpose. And also a de-esser. A de-esser is another form of a dynamic EQ. Same type of thing. It's going to compress a specific band of frequencies uh, just to tame down the S's. So I found that using two de-essers works actually very well. One at the beginning, one at the end uh, keeps the S's under control again, if you need to. Now, one last tip, and this one is a bonus one, um, and this is good especially if you're new to compression and new to mixing vocals. Uh, when compressing, don't be afraid to overdo it. Overcompress so you can hear what compression sounds like, and then back it off a bit until you don't hear that overcompressed effect. And then you're gonna be close to the sweet spot where your compression is gonna sound the best at. And after I'm done with my vocal sound and I'm happy with the sound that I have, uh, I'm not gonna be afraid to add some volume automation by automating the faders channel uh, so the vocal sits better in the mix again if I need to. So those are basically my main vocal compression techniques that I use on a regular basis. So I hope that was helpful. Now don't forget to download my free guide, The uh, Fundamentals of Compression. Again, the link is down below. And if you have any questions or comments, leave everything in the comment section below. Share and like if you enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already. On until next time, my friend, take care and see you.